Hey guys, this is going to be a follow-up on the actuator teardown video that I did earlier. This video is going to be about the firmware on the actuators and how to configure it, so if you're looking for the electrical setup from the first video, or want some sample code to run one of these actuators yourself, I've uploaded another video on the control of these actuators. When we look at the back of the drive, we can see five connectors. The 24 volt main power input for the actuator is an XT30 connector in the center of the drive. Then there are two JST-GH connectors, one for drive logic power and another for CAN communication. The last two are 51-146 connectors on the bottom of the board, one of which is used to flash the firmware over serial wire debug or SWD, and the other is for communicating with the actuator via USB. The first thing I did with each of these actuators when they arrived is reflash the firmware using a stable binary file provided by Ben Katz. This is the actual firmware used on MIT's actuators, so the fact that the motors still run after flashing is a good indicator that the company in China basically used this exact same electrical design. In order to flash the firmware, we need to connect the SWD pins on the controller to an ST-Link. I'm using an ST-Link that's built into this Nucleo board, but any other ST-Link programmer will work as long as it has SWD pins. Here's a pinout showing how to connect the drives to a couple types of ST-Links. Once the data lines have been connected, we can now power the controller using the 5 or 24 volt input. I recommend using the 24 volt connection because it's required to do some configuration via USB a little bit later on. When powering on the drive, make sure not to just directly switch on or connect to a 24 volt input. Plugging directly into a power supply causes a voltage spike which could potentially damage the components on the board, so be sure to use either a pre-charged circuit or if you're using a power supply, slowly ramp up the voltage so you avoid harming the circuitry. The idle current draw at 24 volts should be about 30 milliamps. So if you want, you can limit the maximum current to protect yourself from any shorts in your wiring. Make sure you reduce the voltage back to zero after you're done working with the drive. Once I've connected the pins to the ST-Link, I then go to my computer and open the ST-Link utility. This is the tool used to flash the firmware onto the actuator. I then open the binary file downloaded from Ben's Google Drive. If you'd like, you can modify the code and then recompile it to use your own binary file. Now you go to Target, then Settings, and hit Refresh to look for your ST-Link. Once you've slowly ramped up the power on the power supply, the program should automatically detect an STM32F series chip on the drive. If this doesn't show up, something may be wrong with your setup. Click OK and you should see the device memory populate on your screen. Now go back into Target and click Program and Verify to flash the program onto the controller. If successful, the utility should say Memory Programmed and Verification OK. Now that the firmware is flashed onto the controller, there are some settings we can configure on the actuator. To do this, we need to begin communicating with the drive via USB, which means we have to have a USB to TTL converter and some type of serial client. I will be using PuTTY and an Adafruit TTL converter. The Adafruit converter has four leads, but we're only interested in the white, green, and black wires, which should be connected to the yellow, black, and red wires respectively. Download and install the TTL converter drivers and PuTTY, then connect the converter to your USB port. In order to communicate with the controller, you'll need to know which COM port the TTL converter is on. You can figure this out by opening the device manager and searching for the converter. Once inside the device manager, go to ports and check for a TTL converter or USB to UART bridge. As you can see here, mine is on COM10. Launch PuTTY and go down to the Serial submenu to configure it. Plug in the following values, replacing my COM port with your COM port. Go back up to the session, select Serial, and set the serial line and speed to the appropriate values. I recommend saving the session so you only have to click once in the future to launch the serial monitor. Press Open to launch the serial terminal and supply power to the motor. It's very important that you follow the guidelines listed previously for powering on the drive. If you use the 5 volt connection here, it will normally cause a series of faults to show up on the serial monitor over and over, so I use the 24 volt connection. 
When initially powered on with 24 volts, you'll normally see a series of faults print a single time. This is normal. Now that the drive is connected to the converter and has been appropriately powered on, we can configure it over the serial interface. From here you can enter motor mode, calibrate the position sensor on the board, adjust the CAN ID, and more. We'll start by entering motor mode. So we press M, and as you can see, the light on the bottom of the drive has illuminated green. Another thing we'll want to do is calibrate the encoder. You should always calibrate the encoder before you use one of these drives. The calibration procedure will automatically execute as soon as you press C. It only takes a few seconds to run and is super important for smooth operation. Once you've calibrated the actuator, you can press Z to zero the motor position at a desired location. Another thing you can do in this menu is display the live encoder measurements coming from the drive. You can see here how the values printed to the screen are changing as I'm moving the lever arm attached to the output. Lastly, you can change a few of the parameters through the setup menu. Here you have access to current bandwidth, CAN ID, master ID, and can set limits for current and CAN timeout. Probably the most common change to be made is the CAN ID of the drive. You can do this by typing I5, for example, and hitting enter. The displayed CAN ID should now be changed to 5, but for this value and for other values to save, you'll need to power cycle the drive. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. If you want, you can also check out my other videos on controlling the actuators using a Teensy or my actuator teardown video.